Hello, 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 hello. Hey buddies, are you getting my voice? Is everything fine? Please let me know. Hello, my dear students. Hello students, how are you all? Are you getting my voice? If yes, then please let me know again in the comment section. <clears throat> Hi Akash, how are you? Hello Sarthak. So, I guess I am audible now, hai na? right? Isn't it? One second. Just your chat. Hi, good evening, everyone. Yes, my dear lovely students. You're audible and visible. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Hi. So welcome to the NEAT 50 days challenge to my dear students. So as I have promised uh, to, uh, as I promised my dear students, he we will be completing your whole syllabus and today it's time for zoology. What may you have already studied now, we will be talking about zoology. So in zoology, if you remember in the previous session, buddies, we talked about what? We talked about the tissues, different tissues like epithelial connect, uh, epithelial tissues, connective tissue, muscular tissues and the nervous tissue. So hope that part of the chapter is clear to you. Now moving on to the next, today I'll be talking about frog and cockroaches. So yes, I'll be talking about that. How good these species are, how beneficial these species are. I'm not talking about those things, but I'll be talking about the morphology, anatomy, because you being biologist, you have to study these model organisms in detail. Yes, okay. So you all know recently cockroach is also added to the syllabus, so let's, let's finish that as well. So how we are going to proceed first we will start with the cockroach and then we will start with the then we will continue with the frog so what you are going to do now everyone get ready with your notebook and keep on writing things okay whatever i'll teach you whatever you will see on the board just write down because when you write something think you can retain the, the, those things for a longer time yes we are having only frog and Cockroach. Okay, need UG 2024? No. Okay, buddy. So, so let's proceed further. Cockroach and frogs we have to study. So let's talk, let's talk about the cockroach. Yes, let's study. Let's talk about the cockroach. Cockroach, you all know this is an organism which belong to dash phylum. Okay. Now tell me what is the phylum of a cockroach? So, cockroach belongs to which phylum? Come on, tell me. Cockroach belongs to which phylum? Come on, come on, come on. Be, guys, be active in the chat box. We will interact. And you can ask questions. I'll be having a close look at the chat box. So, here you said arthropoda. Very well done. So, yes, it belongs to the phylum arthropoda. Yes, it is an animalium, animalia, it belongs to the arthropoda. Arthropoda means these organisms, they are having jointed legs. So, their legs are jointed. So, arthro means jointed legs. Arthro means jointed, poda means legs. Right. Now, how we are going to proceed further? First, we will be talking about the morphology and then we will be proceeding towards the anatomy. So, if you look at the cockroaches, cockroaches are the brown, black colored, bodied animals belonging to the phylum Arthropoda. Not only this, in fact, some are orange color, some are reddish in color. And the today, the, the type study of a cockroach which we will we'll be dealing today, that is a Periplaneta americana. Yes. So, we will be talking about the Periplaneta americana, right? So, let's write down. Periplaneta Americana
ओके तो ब्राइट येलो रेड ग्रीन कलर्ड कॉक्रोचेस हैव आल्सो बीन रिपोर्टेड इन ट्रॉपिकल रीजन साइज अ जनरल साइज हैज बीन गिवन द व्हाट एवर डेटा यू कैन सी व्हाट एवर थिंग्स यू कैन सी दे आर एक्चुअली फ्रॉम योर एनसीईआरटी आई मीन टू से द ओल्ड एनसीईआरटी ओके ओके नाउ दे हैव अ लॉन्ग एंटीना लेग्स फ्लैट एक्सटेंशन ऑफ अपर पार्ट ऑफ द बॉडी वॉल कंसील द हेड they are nocturnal omnivores they live in the damp places throughout the world when you look at the cockroaches cockroaches normally they are active at night so it, there, there is a word written nocturnal some basic things we are studying and then i'll be proceeding in detail just a second buddies just just a second <laughs> one second okay now everything is fine so these are omnivores they're not like you being choosy sometime you like this food sometime like you like that food and but these are the omnivores they can eat on anything right now they are omnivores nocturnal means they are active at night at night time when you look for food in uh, the kitchen so at that time only cockroaches they are also in kitchen they also look for food because in the kitchen organic substances the food waste are there so they normally feed on that now they are the residents of human home they are the serious pest etc and etc now now we will proceed further now this is the main topic because here i'll be talking about the species which is there in your ncert that is the periplanata americana right periplanata americana okay so this is how this cockroach look can you see <sighs> okay i have a good just just listen Huh. Okay, so let's start. <clears throat> We haven't done anything. We will start now, student. Planeta. America. Peri planet America. So if you look at the body, so body is reddish brown in color, and their body is divisible into their body is divisible into head, thorax, thorax, and abdomen. Now actually we are starting the topic. Okay, head, thorax, and abdomen. How? Please have a look, buddies. See. this is a head part this is a thorax part the further thorax part and then this is the abdomen part thorax part and abdomen part clear when we talk about a nymph at the nymphal stages head is made up of six segments thorax is made up of three segments abdomen is made up of 11 segments right okay now if i talk about the adult adult only one segment is present in the head region one segment thorax three segment abdomen 10 segments are present if you look at their body it is clearly visible that their body is a segmented body overall divided into three different part first is a head then is a thorax and third one is a abdomen head part is made up of six segment when we talk about a nymph these segments they fuse when they go they become adult whereas thorax is made up of three segment and they fuse they become they, they remain three only they don't fuse 11 then they become 10 segment okay so these organisms so one thing that comes in everyone's mind that these organisms they are metamerically segment segment point clear to all my students metamerically segmented now let's go deep into see uh thal kaina uh, whatever your name is uh directly this chapter because of one topic is recently introduced which you know that is the frog uh now we have a frog also we have cockroaches also we have tissues also so definitely 
uh, instead of three to four question this time you can expect more than this more than uh, three to four question okay because new topics you know they are being added so most important part the, of this chapter and another thing is we cannot skip because it's very easy also and if you look at the previous uh, uh, paper questions they are very easy and direct and i know you guys are super intelligent and you will be able to do okay okay <laughs> but oh, you will be able to do only when you will watch this session or you have your own notes okay so you should have a clear practice of, of each and every topic and that's the reason we are here now head thorax and abdomen is this point clear now if you look at the segments segment one segment if you look at the one segment right so segment is like a box segment is like a box it's like a this isn't it so it's like this one segment present here another segment third segment fourth segment and if you'll take out this segment segment look like this clear so one one particular one one with because it is on the back side let's say so this will be a dorsal side let's say this is a dorsal side and let's say this is a ventral side obviously then the side one they are the lateral side i'll be talking about do only those things which are there in your ncrt okay so if i talk about the dorsal side dorsal right and the ventral side so here some names are given right first thing is these plates the four plates you can see these four planes plates they are termed as four plates four plates are there these four plates they are termed as clarite clarite right ventral side we have sternum in our body we have a sternum here sternum so on the ventral side the name of sclerite is sternite targite and here we have is targite clear dorsal targite ventral uh, sternite one more line is written in ncrt that these are attached to each other by articulating membrane or arthroidal membrane so let's label this also this is termed as arthroidal membrane arthroidal membrane clear so they have a pleuron also pleuron this is a pleuron not given so we will not focus on this so they are having on the dorsal side they have targite ventral side is sternite they are attached to each other with the help of arthroidal membrane they are in fact attached in between them so some special muscles are present which are termed as targosternal muscle targosternal muscles and targosternal muscles they are important whenever these organisms they respire yes so when they respire they play a great role is this point clear so i have given you a general point regarding the segments present in the body now next thing we talked about they are nocturnal in nature that means they are active at night they are omnivorous and yes you can find them anywhere in the world okay wheresoever you know organic waste waste products are there you will find cockroaches because cockroaches they feed on them okay okay doki okay my dear students so this is one thing so how we are going to proceed we will be talking about each of this part one by one so first of all let's talk about the head part hope a good revision is happening and all of you are enjoying right so yes arthworm we are not talk about arthworm okay okay now next thing is head so in the head what all things you can see here you will see compound i compound i is there you will see antennae right on the antennae sensory structures are present so that they can sense they are sensory in nature here on the ventral part you will see ventral part mouth parts are there 
mouth parts and mouth parts of cockroaches are biting and chewing type biting and chewing type one very important question which type of mouth part is present in case of cockroach so you should know it is biting and chewing type right clear so let's start with the eye now uh, 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 head so in the head first let's talk about what is the position of head so if you look at their body their body is like this and they have a head like this they have a head like this so that means you can see they are present at 90 degree angle 19 degree angle is this we call it as hypogonathus it is like this so we have a head like this but they have a head like this clear so that is a hypogonathus clear right angle now the next point of this is here you will see the eyes are present can you see eyes yes so they are having compound eyes now let's talk about first compound eyes compound eyes are made up of 2000 ometidia in each eye per eye right because of this compound eye they are highly sensitive they produce highly sensitive and low resolution image low resolution image now what do i mean by this if you'll go to your you know at the night time uh, if you'll go to your kitchen right if you'll go to the kitchen and you will see there cockroaches you know moment you will enter their cockroaches they start moving because they have you can see 2000 2000 uh, eyes smaller smaller eyes are present in one eye which are termed as ometidia and each ometidia is the one which is responsible for making mosaic vision now mosaic vision is suppose you are standing like this right and this is a cockroach eye let's say so cockroach eye will divide your body into 2000 parts and each of the ometidia will create a image and they will create a image and that image is termed as mosaic image right mosaic image so this is a mosaic vision so they have a low resolution one of the very important question which has been asked in the neat what type of image does it produce so you should know it is a mosaic image and they are non overlapping so whatever they produce individual individual image will be produced for each and every segment of your body and non overlapping non overlapping done right so they they are having simple eye also which is of no function but they have compound eye also right <laughs> cockroach is insect only ganesh cockroach is insect only isn't it yes cockroach is what cockroach is insect only okay let's uh, let's read head is triangular in shape lies anteriorly at right angle to the body axis hypogonathus point clear dun 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 it is formed by the fusion of six segment six segment that means in nymphal stage six segments are there but as they grow as they become adult only one segment is there it show great mobility in all direction because they have a flexible neck right now head capsule bears compound eye explanation dun 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 next is you can see here here they are having the antennae so antennae they arise in from from the front of the eyes and they have a socket so if you will see here they are the socket and from the socket you will see these antennae they arise which are highly sensory in function which are highly sensory 
Now, antennae are the sensory receptors which are help in monitoring the environment. Moving on to the next is anterior part of the head bear appendages, biting and chewing type. Super important question. See, biting and chewing type of mouth parts are there in the head region. Now, what all things are present in head? Uh, I mean to say the mouth part. Let's have a quick, quick look. Here, we talked about the antennae. Done. This point is clear. Okay. Now, here. Compound eyes are there, ocellus, right? Simple eye, as I've told you. These are the mouth parts. Can you see what type of mouth parts parts are present? Biting and chewing type. Now here, if you will take out, see, this was my experiment when we used to do. I was in, when I was in my graduation. We have to study the mouth part of cockroaches. So at that time we used to take cockroaches. At that time, in fact, uh, um, if I tell you, ki jo dissection tha, that was allowed. But now dissections are, you know, they are banned. So we used to get cockroaches and we have to pluck each and every mouth part. So here, if you will pluck all the mouth part, you will see that in the center, first thing is they have a tongue-like structure and that tongue-like structure is hypopharynx. So what we used to do, I'll discuss with you, ki we used to take out each and every part, uh, mouth part and normal slide, the glass slide, we have to keep it. And there should be a particular orientation, like we have to keep everything in this orientation which I'll explain you slowly, slowly. So here hypopharynx, in the center there is a tongue-like structure which is a hypopharynx, isn't it? Now next is, here they are having upper lip labrum. So upper lip we have to place it above, same, in the same orientation, in the same way we have to keep the mouth part on a slide and on that basis we get marks. So labrum is the upper lip, labrum, upper lip. Right? Now next is labium. Labium is lower lip. Lower lip. On lower lip, sensory palps are present. What are these? These are the sensory palp. What are these? Sensory palps. Clear? What else? You will see here the teeth. First, mandibles are there. Can you see mandibles? mandibles. Next you will see the maxillae are there. On the maxillae also the sensory palps are present. Let's read this again. Labrum, labium. On the labium sensory palps. Okay. Mandibles, hypopharynx, maxillae. Maxillae also they are having the same. That is the sensory palps are present. Now what's the function of sensory palp? Anyone would like to tell me? What will the function? Function is to catch, right? So that they can sense in, a, a, in case any predator is coming or in case they want to uh, eat something. For that sensory action, they have the sensory pulp. Then clear? Most important, again I am saying it's not a theory paper. Your need is not a theory paper. So here I have just given you an illustration. This is important that all these structures, they are present. Okay, Sambhav. Yes, Periplaneta Americana. Yes, okay, let's start now. Now, moving on to the next day, see, one particular part head is done. Now, moving on to the next is here I am talking about the thorax. Moving on to the second one, we are talking about now the thorax. Now, what is thorax? Let's have a look. So, thorax, if you will see thorax, thorax is having three different parts. Okay. So one part is termed as prothorax, first segment is termed as prothorax, in between there is a mesothorax, last we have is a metathorax, dun 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 dun, clear, clear, clear. So each pair, here also from prothorax, one pair of legs arise, mesothorax another pair of legs arise, metathorax another pair of legs arise, total Three pair of legs. Clear? So, so, so. For, uh, uh, okay. I'll tell you. See. Prothorax, mesothorax and metathorax. So, prothorax is covered by a covering which is termed as pronotum. Dark colored covering. Pronotum. What is this? This is a prothorax. So you can see over here, they have three pairs of legs which look like that they are arising from mesothorax, but no. First one arises from the prothorax. So the name of this leg is prothoracic leg. See it is written here, 
prothoracic leg another is metathoracic mesothoracic so mesothoracic leg next one metathoracic leg so accordingly name has been given whatever there is there is a ncrt why you have to actually keep them here as such okay cockroach is not deleted where are you krishna where are you lost okay oh uh, okay head is connected with thorax by short extension of the prothorax known as neck thoracic segment bear a each thoracic segment bear a right legs now first pair of wing arise from mesothorax now they are having two pairs of wings one is a mesothoracic wing and second is a metathoracic wing first pair of wing arise from the second segment clear it's from the second segment not from the third segment okay now here you will see there is a first pair of wing and this is a second pair of wing this one is termed as tegmina and tegmina is leathery it is dark and leathery this is dark and leathery and from where does it arise mesothorax mesothorax it arises from mesothorax and last one it arises from the metathorax so amongst these two which one help in flying tegmina the first one or the second one the second one help in flight yes this one help in flight so this is transparent and this is the one which helps in flying then what is the function of tegmina tegmina is like this tegmina covers the body and it helps in the protection yes yeah let's read let's read let's read okay four wing mesothoracic is termed as tegmina which is opaque dark and leathery discussed earlier also cover the hind wing when the insect is at rest the hind wing are transparent and membranous and are used in flight okay so amongst the cockroach if i talk about the nymphal stage and adult stage adult stage they have wings okay and how much time will it take from a you know egg to an adult one year right one year that i'll show you wait 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 okay so let's start let's have a quick look see this is dark and leathery this is transparent and they help in flight okay your favorite animal cockroach now moving on to the next is the abdomen come back to this so this is termed as abdomen 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 total 10 segments are there how many segments 10 segments in abdomen 10 segments in abdomen i am giving you a quick reading of ncrt also let's have a look so this is what your ncrt talks about here abdomen in both males and female consist of 10 segment right now the most important part of this chapter here it shows in a female seventh sternum is boat shaped and together with the eighth and ninth sterna forms a brood or the genital pouch now what they are saying in case of female in case of female the seventh sternum seventh sternum become boat shaped seventh sternum becomes boat shaped i'll make it again seventh sternum becomes boat shaped what is this seventh turn now turn now okay so seventh ke above seventh ke above there will be seventh targa this is seventh targa write this clear now here what they say is eighth and ninth sterna i'll use another color eighth sorry sorry one second <coughs> along with 8th and 9th one say right this is 7 targa along with 8th and 9th this is 8th and 9th sterna 
yes this is the seventh targa below the seventh targa there will be seventh sterna so what they are saying is seventh sterna becomes boat shaped along with the seven uh, sorry along with the eighth and ninth sterna all three all three sterna sterna all three what they form is a brood pouch brood pouch what they form is brood pouch in case of female or genital pouch in case of female i'll show you here here you will see seventh eighth and ninth they form this genital chamber or the genital pouch can you see this genital chamber and genital pouch so it is present on the this side ventral side okay lower ventral side in case of phoebe okay now moving on to the next now let's talk about now one more line is written brood or genital pouch whose anterior part contain female gonapopore sperma thecal pore collateral gland this i'll explain you later like if you want i can explain you here also let's let's complete this line also so here what will you see here you will see here what you can see this is a sperma theca sperma theca is the one where the female stores the sperm so here sperma thecal opening is there in this brood pouch what else you can see there is a collateral gland opening and you can see here the gonapophyses are also present and gonapophyses they helps in the process of copulation okay now uh, uh, let's move on to the next one male the most important part is a male in male the genital pouch or chamber lie at the hind end of abdomen dorsally by ninth and tenth, tenth targa and ventrally by ninth sternum what they are saying is ninth and tenth ninth and tenth targa ninth and tenth targa along with ninth sterna right ninth sterna they together form a brood pouch they together form a brood pouch very important it is yeah they form a brood pouch ninth and tenth targa ninth and tenth targa and just one fragment uh, segment over here that is a ninth sterna they form this brood pouch now here in case of me uh, in case of me let's have a look what all things you can see see here here you will see this is a pouch this is a pouch like structure present at the posterior part of the body here fellow mirrors are there tentilators are there pseudo penis is there a caudal style that i'll show you the anal uh, sarcas fellow mirrors fellow mirrors they etc they are present all these are present and their function is cooperation so they help in cooperation what do you want me to repeat ashish what do you what's the doubt you have can you please the recent line again which one ashish you talk are you talking about the female or the male one okay i'll repeat both of them in case of female when we talk about the female in case of female the three genital three uh, you know the sterna over here seventh eighth ninth seventh eighth ninth they will fuse together and what they form is a brood pouch done whereas in case of male what happens is the seventh and eighth seventh and eighth the targa along with ashish is it clear yes this is opposite here the orientation is opposite sorry ninth and tenth targa along with the ninth sterna they form is a brood pouch done clear okay now what is the difference between a male cockroach and a female cockroach so first thing you have to understand the female is you know broader as compared to a male and male you know the wings are bigger so they are in good length if you look at them so they are having bigger length this is the first difference another difference is you can easily identify there's a clear sexual dimorphism seen in case of a cockroach here if i talk about a female cockroach in the female cockroach you will see the anal sarcai are there and even in the male cockroaches anal sarcai is there anal sarcai is the structure which is uh, present in them at the last segment they are present at the 10th segment right where are they present at the 10th segment 10th segment of both the cockroaches they are segmented 
they are segmented segmented in the sense if you look at them so they are having segments they are having segment but in case of male cockroach you know who is famous for a you know style you know boys they love style so here also they are having style so in case of male at the ninth segment unsegmented unsegmented there is a structure present which is termed as anal style so by looking at the cockroach externally you can easily identify so where are these present they are present at the ninth segment and this is a one which is unsegmented and they help in copulation the function is they help in copulation male and female cockroaches this is a difference very important question what is the difference between a male and a female cockroach done clear okay great 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 now let's move on to the digestive system of cockroach right external morphology is done we talked about the head part thorax part we talked about the abdomen part now what is we are talking about the first system and what is that first system that is the digestive system so digestive system of cockroach first thing is they are omnivorous omnivorous how do they capture their food with the help of a mouth part and their mouth part are the biting and chewing type again i am writing biting and chewing type right now from what, how does the food move let's have a look mouth to pharynx right in the pharynx there is opening of of a pair of salivary glands salivary glands salivary glands will open here right a pair of salivary glands they will open here now the next is from the pharynx the food will enter into esophagus 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 se food will enter into crop crop then gizzard all these are the part of foregut what is this this is a foregut for gut now let's have a look see there will be mouth mouth present here excretory system kaun sa hota hai akanish in this case excretory system excretory one is a malpighian tubules uricose glands are also there which helps in the excretion okay all the very best okay so they are the one which helps in the excretion which i'll explain you so these are the part of the foregut now next is after the after this the gizzard the food will enter into the midgut midgut right at the junction of a foregut and a midgut you will find hepatic kk are present hepatic Six to eight hepatic kk are present, right? Which secrete digestive juices, which helps in the digestion. Now moving on to the next after mid gut, what do they have? Is the hind gut, and in the hind gut, what do they have? Is ilia, colon, and rectum. Ilium, colon, and rectum. They are the part of hind gut. hind gut here at the junction of a mid gut and hind gut here they are having malpighian tubules malpighian tubules and malpighian tubules are the tubules which helps in the excretion which i'll show you how the so food will enter into the mouth pharynx then salivary glands will open they are having esophagus which is just like a pipe they are having crop where there is a storage of food they are having gizzard where there is mastication of food then the food will enter here in the midgut in the midgut there will be secretion of digestive enzyme and there will be formation of the proventriculus 
right a covering around it formation occur and then we are having is the ileum colon and the rectum digestion and absorption majorly occur in the case of midgut malpighian tubules are also present which are almost you can say 100 to 150 so their number is 100 to 150 clear and the ileum colon and rectum clear okay 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 Moving on to the next is circulatory system of cockroach. Circulatory system of a cockroach is very important that is of an open type. Which type? Open type. So open type means blood flows in open spaces. Blood flows in open spaces. And what are these open spaces? Open spaces are the sinuses. Open spaces are the sinuses. And here, those open spaces, they are also termed as hemoseal. Hemoseal. Right? Clear? In the hemoseal, there is a fluid present which is termed as hemolymph. Hemolymph. So, over there, the flu fluid is present which is a hemolymph. Okay, I will tell you. So, open spaces they are having is a hemoseal. In that case, the fluid is present and that fluid is termed as, do not be confused between the hemoseal and lymph. So, seal is a space, right? Sinuses, space, they have a cavity. Now, in that, hemolymph is present. Hemolymph. Hemolymph is just like that of a blood. It's like that of a blood, but no respiratory pigment. But no respiratory pigment. They do not have RBC. So, in our case, blood flows in capillaries. Here, blood doesn't flow in capillaries. Now, what type of circulatory system do they have? Let's have a look. So, here, let's talk about the blood circulatory system. Blood circulatory system. The blood circulatory system, what they have is the heart. And their heart is 13 chamber. Heart, 13 chamber. 13 chambers are there in heart. Guys, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Like this, 13 chambers are present. These 13 chamber of heart, they are attached with the alary muscles. They are attached with the alary muscles. So, here in this body what happens is, blood comes into the chambers. So, if you look at the chambers, chambers are like this. Chambers are like this. They are like this. They are like this. They are like this. Clear? So, here you will see blood enters with the help of this. So, from posterior side, blood enters like this and they have a ostia and like this the blood flow from posterior part of the body to anterior part of the body. So, it is like throughout the body blood is there and blood flows from posterior end to anterior end. So, it is like they do not have any capillaries, they do not have a closed circulatory system, they have an open circulatory system. Now, let us read this. Now, here as you can see, the visceral organs located in hemoseal are bathed in hemolymph. Now, open is their blood, you know, circulatory system is open. So, blood always remain in contact with each and every structure. So, here the visceral organ or everyone is in contact with the hemolymph. Done. The hemolymph is composed of colorless plasma, hemocyte, colorless plasma because their blood is white in color, but they do not have respiratory pigment. Hemocytes means the cells are there. There is a plasma and there are cells. Just like that of us, we have a plasma, we have a cells. Cells, here another name is given as hemocyte, one and the same thing. Heart of cockroach cons consists of muscular tube running along, along the mid dorsal line. From the thorax to abdomen. From the thorax to abdomen, like this in the mid-thorax line, it is present. 
and blood flows right see it is differentiated into funnel shaped chamber which ostia on another either side so they have a ostia ostia is a place through which the blood enter blood from the sinuses or open spaces enter into heart through ostia and it is pumped in anteriorly to sinuses again so it is like this see again blood will enter blood will enter like this from here see here and blood will flow forward and again it will come into the hemocele and again it will be pushed back so like this so from posterior side to anterior side the blood flows very easy now along with that uh, uh, yes here yeah. now moving on to the next is respiratory system as we have i have discussed with you they do not have respiratory pigment so how do they respire they respire because they have a open circulatory system and another thing is if you look at their body here 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 on the lateral side of the body on the lateral side of the body small small holes are present and these small holes they are termed as spiracles through the spiracle the you know the oxygen the gases they enter into the body see respiratory system consist of network of trachea that open through the 10 pair of small holes which are termed as spiracles so they have a spiracles spiracles like structures they are present which further like this like this they have a network of tube which are in touch with each and every body tissue like this like this they are present so these are the body's spiracles spiracles so just like that of a rubber band i am wearing so they also have a rubber band which are termed as towards the outer side which are termed as pincher pincher which regulate the opening and closing of these spiracles which are present on the lateral side of the body lateral side how many 10 pairs lateral side of the body right they open into trachea further differentiate into tracheoles what are these tracheoles tracheoles and tracheoles are in touch with the body tissue so with the help of diffusion they diffuse the gases so let's have a look they have a 10 pair of small holes spiracles present on the lateral side of the body thin branching tube tracheal tube subdivided into tracheoles carry oxygen fr air from all the to all the part the opening of spiracles is regulated by spincher exchange of gases take place at the tracheole with the help of diffusion done everyone clear okay yes or no come on let me know are you getting good any doubt If you have any doubt please let me know buddies One second Okay Okay good good Akash what's the doubt you have you can write it in the comment section I'll explain that again Now moving on to the next is excretory system so in excretory system like i have told you some malpighian tubules are present right at the junction of the midgut and hindgut so there are some structure like this fine structure 100 to 150 whose one part i have extended one part i have extended just to show you here <coughs> akash it's like some holes are present here here how many 10 pair of holes in the thorax and abdomen region through which the gases they go inside they further they open into spiracles open into fine fine branches which are termed as trachea and tracheoles and those trachea and tracheoles they are in touch with each and every body cells and the tissues and spiracles they open and close also right when they are sitting they the spiracles they open so that gases they can go inside clear so that gases akash they can go inside if gases they can go inside so uh, it's like uh, uh, respiratory respiration is happening and just like that of a rubber band what is a spincher spincher is like a rubber band which i am wearing so rubber band is present towards the outer side hai right? na 
so this is how we uh, tie something if i have to tie tie something and similarly it's a pipe and from outer side there's a spincher present which regulate its opening and flow okay now this is one uh, malfeasant tubule i have extended and this malfeasant tubule which you can see over here now what this malfeasant tubule do they have the lining which is ciliated right ciliated if you look at these cells they are ciliated they have a cilia ciliated and they are glandular this is one malfeasant tubule i have opened it so this is these are the ciliated and glandular right clear now if you further see what these two now they take up potassium urate potassium urate from the body potassium urate they convert this into uric acid potassium carbonate it go they takes back absorb back and they excrete the uric acid they excrete the uric acid clear potassium urate they take from the body hemocele right they convert into uric acid and uric acid they eliminate so these organisms they are uricotelic what are these these are uricotelic isn't it now what all structures are present in this organism you will see the nephrocytes are also there urico glands which is only present in case of male cockroaches they and fat bodies are also present which helps in the excretion so let's do a complete reading it is performed by the malfeasant tubule the tubule is lined by glandular ciliated cells they absorb nitrogenous waste products and convert them into uric acid which is excreted out through the hindgut see from the hindgut it will be excreted out and like this other structures are also present where are uricose gland present in case of male not in female. not in female i'll show you where are these present okay okay so this is how see, this is the malfeasant tubules are present how many number 100 to 150 lot of them are present okay uh, moving on to the next is nervous system of cockroach what's the time yeah we have lot of time so next is uh the nervous system of cockroach the nervous system of cockroach in our case what all things are present in nervous system we talk about a brain and we talk about a spinal cord isn't it now here if i talk about the brain so it is having two different part one is brain and second we have is a spinal cord right this is what we have clear now corresponding to this what is present in case of cockroach let's have a look so in the brain so they have a supra esophageal ganglion supra esophageal ganglion so what is supra esophageal ganglion so this is a esophagus esophagus and here in the brain region they have supra esophageal ganglion like this ganglion surrounding it supra means out uh, towards the you know encircling it so they are having this now th this supra esophageal ganglion this will supply the nerve to the antennae they will supply the nerve to the antennae and second to the compound eyes compound eyes right but the major part of their body if i talk about uh, you know the nervous system is present when where we have is a spinal cord so corresponding to the spinal cord we have pipe like structure are we pipe like structure i am saying this is a esophagus is a supra supra uh, suppose is a esophagus so esophagus s s c look at like this supra esophageal ganglion the brain region it's like this and supra esophageal okay arohi now moving on to the next what we have is a spinal cord so spinal cord here the nervous system which we have is on the dorsal side where do you have spinal cord here 
these organisms they are non cortic so their nervous system their this part they are present on the ventral side now what these uh, wh what actually do they have is let's have a look so here at the thorax region thorax and the abdomen abdomen thorax and abdomen so in thorax what they have is three ganglia which are segmentally arranged in each segment one two three ganglia are present here the six ganglia are present six ganglia are present right now it is like it is like this is one ganglia this is another ganglia is a bunch guccha in hindi we call it guccha it's a like bunch so three are present like this so like this six are or other present six right now they are attached to each other by longitudinal connectives what are these these are the ganglia these are the longitudinal connectives longitudinal connective longitudinal they are connected to each other is this point clear yes ma'am got it arohi clear okay so it is like this so in the head part only supra esophageal ganglion is there whereas in the nervous here three ganglia that means thorax region three ganglia are there six are present in the abdominal region so where is the major uh, uh, nervous system present you will say ma'am it is in the abdominal region right not in the head region it is more in the thorax and abdomen and that is the reason if we cut the head of a cockroach cockroach can live for a week because major nervous system is present in the body that is in the thorax and abdomen see nervous system of a cockroach consists of series of fused segmentally arranged ganglia joined by paired longitudinal connectives longitudinal connectives are there which joins the ganglia right where it is present very important ventral side because they are non cordate now three ganglia rise in the thorax and six in the abdomen same i have explained three ganglia thorax and six in abdomen nervous system of cockroach is spread throughout the body the head hold a bit of nervous system uh, while the rest is situated ventrally ventral part of the body so now you can understand that if head of cockroach is cut see murder if we murder a cockroach if we if we remove the head of a cockroach it can still live as long as for the week as long as for the week and in the head region the brain is represented by supra supra means outside esophageal ganglion <sighs> did it due to starvation of food ma'am doubt what what, what rohit did it the date starvation of food suppose by mistake if you cut a head of the cockroach so now moving on to the next is male and female uh you know reproductive system now with this diagram itself we will understand the male reproductive system in that too in the easiest way male reproductive system male reproductive system the so male reproductive system that means they will be secreting sperms they will be secreting sperms so sp uh, who secretes sperm sperm in this case is secreted by testis now let's understand this topic with the help of this diagram clear and if you're done with this diagram but like done with this diagram so that means this topic is 100% easy peasy clear to you it's like no need of revision also okay so i'll give you a cheat also how to remember the segments everything okay. so here you can see testis are present how many pair of pair of testis is there question comes where it is present four to six segment four to six segment right what will it do it will secrete sperm now sperm once formed in this i'll i'll explain only on one side okay now from here the sperm will enter into the vas deferens so vas deferens says sperm will enter into this structure which looks like a mushroom which looks like a mushroom that is a reason this is termed as mushroom gland 
सिस्टम डाज मशरूम ग्लैंड ओके यस मशरूम ग्लैंड द क्वेश्चन कम्स इन अ पेपर वट ऑल थिंग्स आर देर इन मशरूम मशरूम ग्लैंड सो यू शुड नो माई डियर बडीज इन द मशरूम ग्लैंड यू विल फाइंड सम लॉन्ग टिब्यूल्स कैन यू सी दिस वाइट इज ब्यूटिफुली अरेज लॉन्ग टिब्यूल्स लॉन्ग टिब्यूल्स what else can you see in the center it's like a sunflower so in the center small tubules <coughs> very important part is here seminal vesicle is also present seminal vesicle seminal vesicle now what is a function of a long tubule so long tubule it's like whenever sperm comes suppose this is a sperm right now long tubule will come and it, it will form the layer here the sperms are present the sperms will be present in a pocket right it is there again i am saying it is there in class your 11th if i talk about the syllabus by the nnc clear okay now so these are the sperms present so sperms ki inner most layer inner most layer is because of this inner layer is because of the long tubule so what does it form inner layer inner layer now what does small tubules do small tubules will pour the nutrition so they will pour the nutrition nutrition is required now in this sperma you know sperm pockets so they will pour the nutrition they will add nutrition and what is the function of seminal vesicle seminal vesicle will store sperm pockets packets will store the sperm packets and these all are included in the mushroom gland isn't it they are included in the mushroom gland this is mushroom gland Now what will happen? Sperm from here. So what will happen? The male will hold the female with the help of this, you know, tintillator, the pseudopanis, telomere, etc., and etc. Right? It helps in holding the female. Now sperm layer. See here, it is coming. Here it is coming. Clear? Packets. One layer will be formed by the. That means the second layer, middle layer, will be formed by. middle layer will be formed by ejaculatory duct who forms it ejaculatory duct middle layer clear now the next thing is here after that what will happen the packet will come here now here there is another gland which is a phallic gland there is a phallic gland the secretion of a phallic gland comes here here it will form another layer it will form mushroom gland which is uh, act as an accessory reproductive gland yes rohit gupta absolutely right the vas efferentia vas efferentia enter the okay 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 see uh, why do you guys underestimate these animals what do you think without any without these organism will food web uh, you know today whether i'll tell you they in the whole world if i talk about taxonomists they are really very less like that humans are important these organisms they are also important they play a great role in the uh, uh, you know ecosystem if you if you think ki everything if you have to study on a uh, you know human being that's not possible so you have to in fact look into the other organism also that with that only you will see the comparison if i'll tell you we have uh, like uh, this is how we respire only that thing you will learn but if i talk about the other organism they have a different mechanisms and somewhere other we are similar to them and that comparative study is it's great and it gives us an idea of evolution also don't it okay so all organism on this earth surface they are equally important like you have a right to live 
they also have a right hello okay now moving on to the next that is the female reproductive system okay now female reproductive system here you will see the ovaries are present what do they have is ovaries so they are having ovaries these are the ovaries so in the ovaries what will you see ovarioles 8 plus 8 8 ovariole ovariole on this side add 8 ovariole on this side 8 and 8 ovarioles are present clear what will they secrete ova egg what will they secrete egg now egg will come here what is this oviduct what is this oviduct oviduct say everything will enter into common oviduct or vagina the first thing is where are these present they are present in 2 to 8 2 to 6 2 to 6 abdominal segment 2 to 6 abdominal segments they are present clear yeah. seventh pay you will find the common oviduct or vagina clear now the next thing is here can you see a pouch like structure which is a sperma theca where the sperm storage occur sperm storage occur so here what happens is during copulation female stores the sperms in the sperma theca female will release a eight ovariole eight o egg from this side and eight egg from this side how many eggs total there will be 16 14 to 16 eggs they will be released here there will be here can you see here there will be fertilization over here there will be fertilization so fertilization occurs here so in total what they form is a structure egg like structure like this where total 16 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 like this structure they form and the outermost covering is form, formed by the collateral gland so this covering is will be formed by the collateral gland collateral gland this is termed as utheca so listen to this again eight egg will come from this side eight egg will come from this side total 16 egg with they will come over here right sperma theca will release a sperm there will be fertilization right fertilization say we will get the eggs can you see this eggs now here the collateral glands which is present over here collateral gland they will release the utheca they will form a utheca around it so total how many eggs are present in one utheca there will be 14 to 16 eggs 10 to 11 such utheca will be released by a female right okay mam what is ovariole ovariole is like uh it's like smaller part of an ovary one part second part third part fourth part and each of them they release the egg so eggs are present in various stages of development here this is how you can remember okay rohit clear everyone yes yes are you enjoying if yes then give me thumbs up in the comment section yes ma'am you are able to understand okay come on come on come on come on yes everyone okay are these points clear to you great great what about everyone everyone all of you please answer good 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 all of you enjoying cockroach turn <coughs> so at a time at one time eight to nine utheca average i am saying is released by a female and each utheca contains 14 to 16 eggs now what will happen see these are the eggs eggs will form nymph nymphal stages 13 nymphal stages how many 13 stages it will go through 
right and at last they will form the adult so what they show is a metamorphosis and this metamorphosis is termed as gradual metamorphosis gradual metamorphosis they are also termed as porometabolous meta poro metabolus right 13 stages if i talk about the nymph stages nymph are the one who cannot fly and they are not reproductively mature whereas the adults they are having wings and they are reproductively mature good 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 glad that everything is clear to you okay chalo so with this guys we have completed the cockroach congratulations you did everything with me and that's a great job now before doing the questions let's first move on to the next topic which is a frog and then we will do some questions frogs or frog ah that i don't know that i don't know rohit normal count of sperm in cockroach no idea must be in millions must be in millions isn't it so just imagine one egg one brown color egg which you see in your blood white rohit blood will be white white because hemoglobin is absent as discussed with you hemoglobin is absent so blood color will be white so by mistake have you ever stepped on a cockroach if if yes then uh, cockroach uh, the fluid which comes out of the cockroach that is white in color if not if you haven't stepped don't do it right now uh, don't do it okay it's not ethical i'm saying by mistake Let's move on to the next part of this chapter, which is a frog. Okay, <clears throat> frog, 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 frog. What is the kingdom? Kingdom. Phylum. division right what is the uh let's see what else you want to write acha let's not do this chalo वैसे भी i'll explain you this will do in the chalo now वैसे uh, okay okay so it's like i'll tell you frog you all know it comes under the category of a chordate it's an animalia it belongs division they are having is the what's the division division is a gnathostomata right they belong to a class amphibia most important part is amphibia it belongs to the class amphibia amphibia this is the most important right amphibians are those which are having dual mode of life they are also tetrapoda right they have a, they are also tetrapoda they have uh, you know two pairs of legs okay i am not going into the detail if i start the you know it's my habit whenever i start the animal kingdom i have that animal kingdom ka keeda in me i just keep on talking about it so i'll not talk about it that will be a waste of time in the animal kingdom we will do that now it belongs to the amphibia amphibia means these are the organism which have a dual mode of life the so dual mode of life that means they can live on land live on land plus water live on land as well as water now if i talk about their general features so one of the feature is they do not have a constant body temperature that means they are poikilotherm no constant body temperature so that is the reason to avoid harsh environmental condition they undergo hibernation and estivation hibernation means winter sleep estivation means summer sleep another most important feature of this group of organism is that they show protective coloration if they will live in a grass they will convert their body according to that uh, uh, one so these organisms they are poikilotherms 
poikilotherms. Poikilotherms means no co constant body temperature. No constant body temperature. Now paper, if suppose this word comes in a paper, ectotherm, that is also right. Poikilotherm or ectotherm. We are endotherm, we have a constant body temperature. Our body fluctuates when we have a fever. Next thing is, because they are poikilotherms, poikilotherms, so they undergo hibernation and estivation. Hibernation. What is hibernation? Hibernation is winter sleep. Hibernation is winter sleep and estivation. Estivation. What is estivation? Estivation is summer sleep. Summer sleep. Right? They show protective protective coloration. Coloration. Which is camouflage, mimicry. They blend according to the atmosphere. They can live on land also, they can live on water. How do they copulate? It's like they show external fertilization. F female will release egg, male will release sperm in the water and there will be fertilization. So amphibians were those group of organisms who first migrated to land, but they need water also to complete their life cycle. So they used to go back to water for laying egg. So they used to lay egg there and in the whole life cycle they have a tadpole also. They have a tadpole also. Without tadpole, they cannot complete their life cycle. So tadpole is very much sim similar to fishes because they have a gills just like that of a fish. And that gives us an idea that they are evolved from fishes. Okay. Now let's talk about the morphology. So first, we are starting with the morphology. Morphology. First, clear? You all know? What is this? This is a dorsal surface. This is a dorsal surface and this is a ventral surface. This is a dorsal surface and this is a ventral surface. This is a chordate. Like that of us. They, they are very much similar to us. No, frog doesn't have Ayush gills. Frog doesn't have gills, but the tadpole, they have gills. Isn't it? Okay. Now, morphology, if I talk about their dorsal surface, dorsal one is olive green in color. Dorsal is olive green in color with spot, with black spot, spots. Whereas if I talk about their ventral side, ventral side that is yellow. And again I am saying the morphology whatever we are doing that is for the Rana Tigrina. Rana Tigrina. And I can assure you within this time duration of a one hour or one, uh, yes, I am teaching you from the basic, clear? From zero, Ayush, okay? Now that I can assure you, if you will watch this session, after this, the cockro cockroach, cockroach that we have done, the frog will also be super duper easy peasy clear to you. It's just that you have to be with this in this session for another hour, okay? Frog will be done. After that, you just need a reading of your NCRT. Now, what are you doing simultaneously? Hope you are making your notes also. Keep making your notes also. Now, you'll be like, ma'am, why notes at this time? Because it's like more you will write, more things will go in your brain. Okay. This is a Rana Tigrina. Now, moving on to the next is their body. Their body is divisible into, divisible into two parts. One is a head, head part, and then there is trunk. Head and trunk. Most important part is neck and tail absent. Neck and tail absent. They are absent. Can you see neck? No, right? Tail will, is also not there. Now, moving on to the next stage, if I talk about the head, head may what all you can see? You will see the mouth. Mouth may there will be bi-lobed tongue. Bi-lobed tongue. They have eye, a pair of eye, right? Present on a socket. Very beautiful eye they have. Present on a socket. 
covered with a nictitating membrane socketed right very important i am writing here covered with nictitating membrane why why do they have nictitating membrane can anyone tell me why it is important rohit ayush akash anyone why do they have nictitating membrane can you tell me why a covering is there around their eyes what is the importance they have a covering why because they go to water yes they protect their eye in water clear so this layer protect their eye when they are in water what else is present they have a ear an external ear in the name of extern external ear first of all it is absent they have tympanum tympanum they are having tympanum don't know okay divine now hope you know yes because it protect their eye when they are in water how do we swim we we require you know um, you know we require uh, some eye gears similarly they also this is god has given them now moving on to the trunk part now in the trunk part what you can see four limbs four limbs and hind limbs that's it right four 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 limbs four limbs four four so what do they have is four digits four digit at the first first digit of a four limb here they have copulatory pad they have copulatory pad in case of male so that they can hold the female at the time of copulation yes that also i'll explain you rohit so they have so that they can easily hold now hind limb hind limb you know that it is more muscular and they are having five digit five digits and yes they are webbed webbed why so that they can swim for swimming swimming clear four limb and hind limbs they are modified in this way so that they can walk they can leap they can run they can swim yes this is from 11th class what else is the difference between a male and the female uh, frog another difference between a male and female frog is in case of male you will find vocal sac or vocal sac or vocal cords are present and that is the reason they produce a sound of trrr, trrr. and why do they produce sound so that they can attract the female so here i am writing this male have vocal sac or cords for creating sound and sound for attracting female attracting female so that they can attract the female done yes this is all about the frog now moving on to the next is first let's talk about this also we have done so they can easily swim walk leap and burrow they can make deep burrow because they have to hide see yeah. moving on to the first let's talk about the digestive system of frog digestive systems okay before starting the digestive system let's do ncert reading you know each and every line of ncert is important let's do the reading it won't take much time okay morphology 
you all know the skin is smooth slippery because of the presence of mucus if you touch their skin their skin uh, they are very fine slippery the reason is if, because they respire through the skin they show cutaneous respiration that i'll show you in that respiration they show respire through the skin when they are in water they respire through skin also when they are you know they are in hibernation and estivation they respire through skin also cutaneous respiration now skin is always maintained moist condition the color on the dorsal side is generally olive green done with patches spots on the ventral side skin is uniform and pale play, yellow the frog never drinks water it absorbs through the skin so they absorb water from the skin now, next is body of frog is divisible into head trunk again neck and tail are absent discussed earlier one more thing they have a nostrils also they have a mouth nostrils are present eyes uh, eyes are bulged covered with nictitating membrane that protect them when they are in water so these things they protect them so when they are in water next thing on either side of eyes membranous tympanum receives the sound signal four limb hand hand limb they are modified for swimming walking leap 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 means jump burrow why do they make burrows they make burrows because they have to live uh, in those deep burrows during hibernation and estivation hind limbs hind five digit larger muscular and they are delicacy in various countries a uh, four limb four digit feet are webbed that helps in swimming exhibit sexual dimorphism male frog distinguished by the presence of sound producing vocal sac copulatory pad very important first digit of four limb how will you remember if you talk about the copulatory pad is present on ff first digit of four limb where it present first digit of four limb okay clear yes now we have to now talk about the anatomy in anatomy first we are starting with the digestive system everyone's favorite digestive system so digestive system is in fact very egpg type now digestive system digestive system if i look at these organisms they are carnivore carnivore so that is the reason length of length of digestive tract is reduced digestive tract is less means reduced because they are carnivore so how do they capture their food they capture by capture food by bilobed tongue bilobed tongue so they have a tongue which is bilobed two lobes are there in the tongue right now every year this question comes from cockroach at this time in last years me ki that's a very easy peasy question ki what is the digestive tract that is tract is like which one is the first part and which one is the last part okay so in a cockroach it is like mouth pharynx esophagus crop then gizzard then there is you know midgut and a hindgut like this here also in this organism this question can be asked because it's the first time frog has been added so always remember the path of food so here from the mouth mouth to the esophagus esophagus right esophagus to the stomach then to the intestine right intestine there are various parts like duodenum there is a ileum there is a rectum then open to outside through a cloaca undigested food goes out through the cloacal aperture this 
दिस इज द फ्लो ऑफ फूड क्लियर यस माउथ इसोफेगस स्टमक इंटेस्टीन क्लोएका एंड द क्लोएकल अपर्चर चलो लेट्स डू दिस ओके सो वट विल हैपन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फ्रॉग विल कैप्चर द फूड कार्निवोर्स दो दे फीड ऑन इंसेक्ट फूड विल कम इन द माउथ then here from the mouth the food will enter into the esophagus so esophagus say it will enter into the stomach now what all things are present in stomach in the stomach first point i am writing in the stomach there will be hcl there will be hcl plus protein digesting enzyme protein digesting enzyme there will be enzymes which helps in the protein digestion clear then there will be intestine next part is the intestine can you see intestine right intestine first part is duodenum right now let's let me explain you intestine in the intestine first part is duodenum this is a duodenum this is a duodenum okay now here just like that of us they have a liver 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 gives bile bile is stored in a gall bladder which i am labeling is as gb gall bladder clear yeah. they have a leaf like structure which is a pancreas i am labeling it here pancreas pancreas now what happens is see from here bile comes see bile is coming right from here pancreatic duct this is coming clear both of them they will join together and with the help of common bile duct what is this this is a common this is what your ncert says bile duct the bile plus bile plus pancreatic enzyme pancreatic enzyme will enter into the duodenum and pancreatic enzymes are the one which are responsible for the digestion of the carbohydrates and proteins carbohydrates and proteins is it is this point clear yes okay okay then 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 see this is a rectum everything goes out with the help of a rectum aperture each and everything i have explained to you here done to all my dear students come on clear okay now let's do a quick ncert reading digestive system consists of alimentary canal and glands are there alimentary canal is short because of the they are carnivores hence the length of intestine is reduced same line mouth open into a buccal cavity leading to esophagus through pharynx esophagus is a short tube that open into a stomach which in turn continue in the intestine rectum and finally open to outside by cloaca characteristic feature of this organism is they have cloaca now a liver secretes bile that is stored in gall bladder pancreas digestive enzyme produce the pancreatic juice contain digestive enzyme food is captured by bilobed tongue digestion food take place by action of hcl and gastric juices gastric juices are mentioned as protein digesting enzyme now secreted by the wall of stomach partially digested chyme is passed from the stomach to first part of intestine that is duodenum duodenum receives the bile from the gall bladder and pancreatic juice from the pancreas through a common bile duct each and everything from ncert beautifully we have done now bile fat digestion that you know pancreatic for the carbohydrates and protein digestion final digestion take place in intestine does this food is absorbed by the finger like folds just like that of us we have a villi similarly they also have a villi undigested solid food comes out of the rectum and then it again enters into the this one okay 
clear? 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 Everyone? Yes, I want to study. But if you, if you, if you will study for, you know, um, if you will be dedicated, means hundred percent dedication you have to give. Forget about anything. Forget about phones. Forget about your friends. Everything. Just, you know, uh, this is a, this is somewhere here. Estimate yourself with the books. You will be able to qualify. Let's talk about the respiratory system. The next paragraph, which is there in NCRT, is all about the respiratory system. Now, let's do respiratory system. Respiratory. Now, what is this respiratory system all about? Respiratory system means gaseous exchange. So, there are three different ways by which gaseous exchange occur. First, let's divide when <coughs> in water, how do they respire? When on land, how do they respire? When they are hibernating or estivating? Hibernation or estivation, how do they respire? Now, the first thing is when they are in, uh, you know, water. Water. How do they respire when they are in water? They show cutaneous respiration, right? If I talk about adult, adult show cutaneous respiration. Whereas when we talk about the tadpole, tadpole, they respire by gills. They have gills. Moving on to the land, when they are on land, they show cutaneous respiration. They show buccopharyngeal respiration. Buccopharyngeal respiration. And the next thing is... Oh God, they show pulmonary respiration. Pulmonary respiration. These are the three types of respiration. Cutaneous means they show through the respiration through the skin. Buccal cavity. With the help of buccal cavity also, they show exchange of gases. They have a buccal cavity. Easy, uh, trans means the thin membrane is there from where they can easily respire. Pulmonary, they have a pink colored gills present here, right? In the upper part of the thorax, they have a pink colored structure that these pink color structure helps in the respiration. Hibernation and estivation, whenever they hibernate and estivate, they show cutaneous respiration. They do not have diaphragm uh, like, like that of us. They do not have diaphragm. Because they do not have diaphragm, so the pulmonary respiration is not that efficient. So they gulf, gulp the air like this. And like this, they take in the food. Oh, sorry, air. Frog respire on land and water by different methods. Water, skin, aquatic respiratory organ, cutaneous respiration. Dissolved oxygen in the water is exchanged through the skin by diffusion. On land, the buccal cavity, skin, lung act, act as a respiratory system. Respiration by lung is pulmonary respiration. Lungs are the elongated pink color structure present in the upper part of the body, thorax region. Air enter through the nostrils, buccal cavity, lungs during estivation, hibernation. Gases exchange take place through the skin. I've collaborated everything with in this chart. Okay. Okay, my dear students. Yes. Again, sleeping beauties, get up. Your neat exam is around the corner. And we, uh, after few, now I'll say days, we will be sitting. In fact, you guys will be sitting for the neat examination. So hope. Okay, now next is uh, sister circulatory system. Circulatory system. So in circulatory system, first let's talk about blood circulatory system. Blood. circulatory 
system so what do they have is blood same just like that of us they have a same blood right which is made up of the corpuscles corpuscles are the cells plus there is a plasma nothing new clear what type of circulation do they have what type of circulation do they have they are having any idea closed or open closed circulation they respire or oh sorry they uh, show closed so they have a closed circulatory system now let's talk about their circulatory system let's talk about their heart so they are having three chambered heart right they are having right atria left atria and they are having ventricle ventricle right uh, <coughs> on the dorsal side of a right atria right atria dorsal side dorsal side dorsal side of right atria means at the back side what is the dorsal side means back dorsal is back so this is the atria atria back side atria back side dorsal side there is a chamber present which is termed as sinus venosus sinus venosus sinus venosus receives all the sinus venosus receive all the deoxygenated blood from the body deoxygenated deoxygenated blood from the body comes here see deoxygenated deoxygenated blood comes here deoxygenated blood and this deoxygenated blood from the body it comes here superior vena cava inferior vena cava they open in the so another chamber which is a sinus venosus and from there it goes to the right atria right atria see this will go into the ventricles this will go to the ventricles clear from the lungs oxygenated blood they will enter into the right atria left atria left atria say it will enter into the ventricle and the ventricle there is mixing of blood there is mixing of blood so mixed blood the deoxygenated blood and the oxygenated blood it will go to another chamber and this chamber is conus arteriosus or truncus arteriosus arteriosus truncus arteriosus it will go there and from here it will be distributed to the body that means mixed blood is distributed so one of the characteristic feature is they are having this right atria uh, uh, left atria and the ventricle three chambers are there but the right atria receive blood from another chamber if someone ask you how many chambers are present so you should know only three chambers are present right atria the left atria and one ventricle is there but an extra two extra chambers are present but here if i talk about the position of this this is the dorsal side of the right atria this is the one second this is a dorsal side of the right atria another one so another one is present on the ventral side conus arteriosus is present on the ventral side this is on the ventral side of ventricle come on note this down yes so here there is a circulation the incomplete double circulation good so there is incomplete double circulation incomplete 
double circulation clear so cells me you will find rbcs are there wbcs are there but if i talk about they have a lymphatic system also detailed lymphatic system is not given what they have is a lymph some lymph ducts are there lymph nodes are present right what is lymph lymph is a one where you will not find respiratory pigment clear the hemoglobin is not there and along with that the less proteins are present so this is what comparatively it is uh, mentioned over here okay now let's read this acha we have to do the portal circulation also let's do the portal circulation then i uh, we will read this portal circulation portal circulation two type of portal circulation is present in case of frog one is hepatic portal circulation hepatic portal circulation now what is hepatic portal circulation hepatic portal so what is portal circulation let's first uh, let me tell you portal circulation is a circulation which starts with capillaries which start with capillaries and end with capillaries start with capillaries and end with capillaries so how see what is a hepatic portal circulation hepatic portal circulation is like we have is this intestine clear intestine now from the intestine the circulation arises and it goes to a liver this is a liver and what is this this is a intestine uh -uh, one second okay so this is a intestine right clear so circulation is here are some capillaries they arise lots of capillaries they arise from here it goes like this like this clear yeah. so this is termed as hepatic portal circulation so whatever we eat instead of going uh, suppose uh, any drug or any uh, medicines whatever we take so they go directly to liver for detoxification and then they enter into the circulation otherwise some some toxins are there if toxins are there and toxins they will directly go to the heart which can be fatal for us so that is the reason we have a hepatic portal circulation that means intestine to liver circulation blood circulation is there clear now next one is a renal portal circulation renal portal circulation renal portal circulation so what is a renal portal circulation renal portal circulation is that circulation where bodies these are the kidneys kidneys here some capillaries they are coming some capillaries are coming and they ultimately goes to the lower part of the body lower part of body so capillaries they arise from the uh, kidneys and they cap uh, then they join together and ultimately go to the lower part of the body this is a re renal renal portal circulation okay these are the two type of circulation which exist now let's do a reading for a fit let's do this reading your vascular system consists of a frog as uh, a closed type clear mentioned complete uh, complete double circulation is there frog have a lymphatic system also the blood vascular system involve heart blood vessel blood lymphatic system consist of lymph lymph channels and the lymph nodes 
Heart is a muscular structure situated on the upper part of the body cavity. Three chamber, two atria, one ventricle is there. Covered by membrane which is a pericardium. So yes, there is a covering which is a pericardium. 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 Okay. A triangular structure called sinus venosus. Sinus venosus joins the right atrium. It receives the blood through the major veins called vena cava. The ventricle open into a sac like structure. Conus arteriosus on the ventral side. V for ventricle. So it is present on the ventral side of the body. And this is on the dorsal side of the atria. Blood from the heart is carried to all part of the body by arteries. The vein collect blood from different part of the body to the heart and form the venous system. Special venous connection between the liver intestine as well as the kidney and lower part of the body are present in frog. Former is called this one liver is related hepatic portal system. Another one is termed as a renal portal system. You will not find renal portal system in case of us. We have a hepatic portal system. We have hypophyseal portal system also. Blood is composed of plasma cells. Blood cells are RBC, erythrocyte. Everything is mentioned here. Okay, same, just like that of a human. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have a pigment, we have a hemoglobin, they also have a hemoglobin. We have WBC, they have a WBC. Okay, buddies, clear everyone? Okay. Now, moving on to the next, let's talk about the excretory system. Like you were asking excretory system. So, we have a diagram of, we have a common diagram of excretory system. Okay, excretory system. Excretory system. Now, excretory systems we will study with respect to a male one and the female one separately. Right? Now, here can you see? The excretory may you will see, can you see the kidneys are present? One, two kidneys. Now, if you look at the kidney, you will say, ma'am, both the kidneys they do not look alike, but they are alike. On the one side, they have tried to show the uh, male reproductive system also, but just focus that kidney looks like this. The right one for the excretory system, you have to focus on the diagram given on the right side. So, kidneys they look like this. Here on the anterior part of the kidney, adrenal gland is present. We have get adrenal gland on the anterior part of the kidney. Here they have an adrenal gland like this. Now, is adrenal question comes to me, a student comes to me and they ask this question, ma'am, adrenal gland is only present on the right kidney? No. Adrenal gland will be present on both the kidneys. Okay? For illustration, for a for you know, for in a one diagram, two things are given. So that is the reason both kidneys they do not look alike. But they are same. Okay, <coughs> kidney, in the kidney uriniferous tubules are there, which are also termed as nephron. They will form the urine, urine will come here into this duct, what is this? This is a ureter, ureter. In case of male, the urine comes in ureter and also the sperms they come in ureter. That is a reason here the name is mentioned as urinogenital duct because it carries urine as well as the sperms. So kidneys, a pair of kidneys, they have adrenal gland also. In the kidneys, uriniferous tubules or nephrons are present which secrete urine. Urine comes out, urine enters into ureter. In case of male, ureter is also termed as urinogenital duct. Why? Because it carries sperms also. Okay, clear? Now, then here, this urinogenital duct also opens into this chamber. What is this? Cloaca. You remember in digestive system, the rectum also opens into cloaca. Urinogenital duct in case of male also opens into cloaca. Clear? Now, as they enter into the cloaca, cloaca say it goes out through the cloacal aperture. Clear? Done. Now, frogs are ureotelic. Frogs are ureotelic. Now, now let's move on to excretory system in case of Female. 
कैन यू सी किडनीज वॉट इज दिस ब्लू ब्लू स्ट्रक्चर एड्रीनल ग्लैंड यस आकाश रोहित प्रशांति यस अनुराग वॉट हैपन एनी डाउट राइट सिमिलरली किडनीज आर देयर ओके फीमेल ऑल्सो अ पेयर ऑफ किडनीज नाउ वॉट हैपन्स इज ह्योर यू कैन सी यूरेटर इज रिटर्न वाई यूरिनोजेनाइटल डाक्ट इज नॉट रिटर्न यस why why it is not written it is not written the reason is here there is a separate duct which carries the egg there is a separate duct which carries the uh, you know egg now that is a separate one it just carries the ureter just carries the urine okay then ultimately they enter into the cloaca cloaca opens to outside with the help of a cloaca aperture so cloaca cloaca is that one you know friend in a group where everyone goes and everyone talks about it are uh, just listen to me na another one said listen to me also so cloaca is that chamber where the three things enter the first thing is digestive tract rectum second thing you all know ureter or urinogenital duct ureter and urinogenital duct clear Is this point clear, guys? Any doubt? Please ask me in the comment section. Yes, great, great, great. Okay. No, 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 no. Elimination of nitrogenous waste is carried out by well-developed excretory system. Excretory system consists of pair of kidney, ureter, cloaca, and urinary bladder. Yes, a urinary bladder is also there where there is a storage. They are the compact, dark, red bean-shaped structure situated little posterior in the body cavity on both sides of the vertebral column. Each kidney is composed of several structural functional unit: urinary tubule or nephron. two ureter emerge from kidney in male frog ureter act as a urinogenital duct when it opens into a cloaca in female the ureter and oviduct open separately into cloaca in female we cannot call ureter as urinogenital duct yes cloaca is like a <laughs> okay the thin walled urinary bladder is present ventral to the rectum which opens into a cloaca this i forgot to show you here see There's a urine or blood, uh, bladder also, ventral side. It is there. Clear? It stores the urine, and they are ureotelic. They can't store the urine. They are ureotelic. Done? Now, excretory waste are carried by blood, kidney, which is separated and excreted. Okay, now done. Now, moving on to the next is control and coordination. control and coordination you all know two topics comes in control and coordination control and coordination one is chemical control and coordination one is chemical control and coordination chemical control and coordination and second one is neural control and coordination in chemical control and coordination they are having some <coughs> glands what kind of glands are there so they are having pituitary they are having thyroid parathyroid <sighs> parathyroid they are having adrenal thymus adrenal gland thymus gland pineal gland they gonads so they have all the glands which we have chemical coordination so they'll be having some secretions clear no 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 now next is no rohit uh, yeah cns and uh, wo, that will come in neural control and coordination so second part is neural control and coordination neural control 
so in neural control you all know so there is a brain and there is a spinal cord let's not do this let's say central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system <coughs> We have central nervous system, nervous system, and there is peripheral nervous system. Peripheral nervous system. So it is like that of us in the peripheral nervous system. They are having, uh, you know, nerves. So what all nerves they are having? They have cranial nerves. Cranial nerves are there. and they are having spinal nerve spinal nerves central nervous system mein what all things are there central nervous system mein you will see the brain is there the spinal cord is there right there will be brain and spinal cord <coughs> spinal cord is there clear now if i talk about brain brain has different part one is four brain four brain then the mid brain and hind brain so if i talk about the four brain in the four brain the structures which are present are here you know we have cerebral hemisphere so they also have cerebral hemisphere hemisphere right they are having diencephalon unpaired diencephalon right cerebral hemisphere will be paired paired they are having unpaired diencephalon paired cerebral hemisphere and yes olfactory lobes olfactory lobes is that the part of the four brain now let's talk about the mid brain optic lobes paired optic lobes corpora bigemina condition bigemina clear what else this is the mid brain na i forgot to write mid brain mid brain we have a mid brain then the hind brain hind brain so what all things are there in hind brain we have cerebellum we have cerebellum tree mo medulla oblongata which communicate to spinal cord tetron oblongata Oh, is there now medulla oblongata they communicate to spinal cord with the help of a foramen magnum with the help of a foramen magnum okay okay yeah pancreatic island uh, uh, islets of langerhans is also there which i didn't explain so let's understand this brain three parts fore brain mid brain and hind brain in the fore brain part is cerebral hemisphere cerebral hemispheres are these you know hemisphere two hemispheres are there there will be uh, along diencephalon there will be unpaired diencephalon we have paired diencephalon they have unpaired diencephalon they have a olfactory lobe we have uh, same we in the mid brain what they have is op optic lobes we also have optic lobes we have corpora quadrigemina present the two superior colliculi we have a two inferior colliculi they just have two yes now if i talk about the hind brain in the hind brain they are having cerebellum we have cerebellum they are having the medulla oblongata we have medulla oblongata medulla oblongata is present here which communicate to spinal cord through a hole which is a cerebr uh, uh, which is a cerebrum uh, uh, foramen magnum here yeah. so everything you can read over here now brain is present in this box what is this this is a cranium spinal cord right it here the vertebral column is present they are also having vertebral column 
there also cordates like us isn't it okay okay <clears throat> now let's talk about this sensory system as a sensory system is not developed in them they have a well developed eyes right they have uh, you will see ki in the, these organisms they are having ear is also well developed eyes and ears are they are well developed but if i talk about the sensory sensory olfactory ya gustatory so these are just nerve endings okay let's have a look frog has different type of sense organ touch sensory papillae sensory papillae they are just nerve endings sensory sensory papillae papillae taste taste buds are there taste buds again just nerve endings smell nasal epithelium they have nostrils in the nostrils nasal epithelium are there which are just nerve endings vision eyes and hearings are there out of these eyes and internal ears they are well organized structure rest all are the nerve endings Cell cellular aggregation of the nerve ending okay frog are the paired spherical structure situated in the orbits they are the simple eyes external ear is absent only tympanum is seen externally ear is a organ of hearing as well as balancing in our case also here helps in balancing you all know otolith statolith so they help in balancing okay okay now let's talk about the male structure okay the male reproductive structure so in the male reproductive structure what you can see is the testis are there testis will secrete sperm right testis will secrete they will secrete sperm above there is a fat body these are the testis present clear they will release the sperm here into this duct which is vas efferentia vasa efferentia they will duct into this ultimately they will drain the sperms into this canal bidder's canal bidder's canal so it is like sperm will be synthesized in the testis you can see testis uh, testis now from the testis the sperm will enter into vasa efferentia from vasa efferentia sperm will enter into the bidder's canal bidder canal say it will enter into the ureter ureter is also termed as urinogenital duct and from there it will enter into the cloaca that's it very easy peasy now here what happens is female sorry male will hold the female during the first they will produce a sound female will come female will be attracted the female uh, male will hold the sperm and uh, sorry uh, male will hold the female in that case what will happen with the help of a copulatory pad because you know on the first digit of a forelimb they have a copulatory pad males mein. now what will happen female will release egg in the water male will release sperm in the water and there will be fertilization in water fertilization occur in water external fertilization occur here now moving on to the female see in case of female you will see the ovaries are there can you see these ovaries one two we have two ovaries they also have two ovaries in this the eggs ovas are there here what you can see the eggs they come separately into this from this oviduct they have a funnel shaped oviduct what is this this is a oviduct funnel shaped oviduct and from this oviduct it comes over here where in the cloaca this is a cloaca it will come into the cloaca and cloaca it will come out clear sperm will be released egg will be released and then there will be fertilization so fertilization may then what will happen there will be formation of a tadpole see it's a theory paper it's a mcq wala paper how can you expect such things clear now female reproductive organ include pair of ovaries ovaries are situated uh, near kidneys there is no functional connection with the kidneys as you know there is a separate ureter present a pair of oviduct arise from the ovaries open into cloaca separately this also have discussed very important mature female female can release at one time 2500 to 3000 egg ova so there will be fertilization because external fertilization bodies occurs and because of the external fertilization chances ki predator they can attack on it chances of fertilization becomes very less so number of eggs which are produced when the number of eggs which are released from a female they are more fertilization external take place in water like i have told you these are amphibians 
these were the first organism who migrated to land for the water uh, land from the water so but for the completion of their life cycle they require water so for the fertilization they have this water development involve a larval stage which is a tadpole you all know tadpole show metamorphosis which show which forms adult tadpoles they have gills frogs are beneficial to mankind because they eat insects protects the crop now someone will come in the chat box and someone will say ma'am why are we talking about the frog and if i'll tell you if you remove the frog from the ecosystem whole ecosystem will be disturbed so we should know about these organisms also they eat insects protects a crop ecological balance food chain and muscular legs they are used by food by many country many countries many people they consume it okay so with this guys we have completed the today's session also yes that is frog and the cockroach how did you find the session interesting did you enjoy okay so well, let's do this question select the correct statement come on give me answer in the chat box from the one given below respect to the peri planeta americana nervous system dorsally consists of the segmentally arranged ganglia joined by the pair of longitudinal connected males appear okay pair of short thread like anal style 16 very long uh, malphigian tubules mid gut hind gun grinding of food is done by the mouth part only come on i want all of you to give answers come on do it fast give answers come on come on come on what is the correct answer you have to find out a correct statement so among this correct statement is this why dorsal is wrong in cockroach it is ventral next is 16 152 sorry 102 150 why 3 16 how why 50 100 to 150 malphigian tubules are there shubhashri what are you doing akash grinding of food is done by gizzard this is correct yes Mm. Okay. What external changes are visible after the last molt of cockroach nymph? This was asked in the neat paper. So look at the level of questions. Questions they are super easy. If you know the concept, you can give answers. yes four wings and hind wings will develop yes four wings and hind wings will develop okay okay the targa sterna and pleura targa sterna pleura they are joined by how are they joined i am talking about this orange ish one what is this come on what is this name you know the targa present on this is targa this is targa sterna this is pleura how are they join what is the name confused option 3 arthroidal membrane yes rohit gupta yes rohit absolutely right. akash absolutely right arthroidal membrane very nice okay body cells in a cockroach discharge their nitrogenous waste into the hemolymph by mainly in the form of the waste are taken up by the malphigian tubule by which name potassium urate then it will be converted into uric acid tegmina in cockroach arise from tegmina is what 
द फर्स्ट पेयर ऑफ विंग फोर विंग इट अराइज फ्रॉम वेयर मीजो थोराक्स इट अराइज फ्रॉम मीजो थोराक्स ओके इन मेल कॉक्रोचेस पर्म्स आर स्टोर्ड इन विच पार्ट ऑफ रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम वे डू द स्टोर दे स्टोर इट इन सेमाइनल वेसाइकल लॉन्ग टिब्यूल मेक्स अ इनर लेयर शॉर्ट टिब्यूल पोर्स अ न्यूट्रिशन अनदर लेयर बाय जैकुलेटरी डक्ट थर्ड लेयर बाय फैलिक ग्लैंड यस क्लियर ओके चलो लेट्स डू दिस लास्ट क्वेश्चन इजी पीजी वाला क्वेश्चन Select the correct sequence of organs in the elementary canal of cockroach, starting from mouth. Ah, oh. what is the correct? Pharynx, esophagus, crop, gizzard, ileum, colon, rectum. Yes, option two. Pharynx, esophagus, no. Esophagus, crop, and then gizzard. No, pharynx, esophagus, gizzard, gizzard, ileum, crop. No. Option two is correct. Yes. Okay. Hello. So, guys, let's wind up the session here. We will meet you in the next class. We will start a new chapter tomorrow. That is excretory products and their elimination. Till then, have a nice day. Take care. and all the very best for the neat examination see you tomorrow and what we want is a selection and so we will be working really very hard okay bye bye students have a nice day and do practice more question because without practice nothing is possible so please practice question so hope you enjoyed the session if yes everyone okay bye bye guys take care